I thought we would take a few minutes and go through how to put this catapult together. Just learning how the different constraints work in Inventor and, and also how the joints work. There's a time and place for both of them. I'll just model how I put this thing together. So the first thing I'll do is I'll start and I'll create a new assembly. So I'll go to place and I'm going to pull up the components. So the first thing I'll pull up is the base. And remember in Inventor I can continue placing these over and over until I right click and say OK. Right, so I've got that. Now I'm going to place and let's let's put the uprights in. So I know I need one there and one there as well. So there's two. Let me go ahead now before I put all of these things in because that seems to be a problem with, with most people at the beginning. They go ahead and they think, well, I've got to pull everything in here that I'm going to need. Makes it a little more difficult, I think. So I go to constrain now. And I'm going to say mate, which is what comes up, right? This is this is your mate constraint right there okay that's what defaults so I'm gonna click that and I'll say alright give me the bottom of that and it goes somewhere on here right and I'll hit apply Now I know some of you are like but that's not where it goes I need to fix it but that's okay for right now we'll hit apply All right, so now we're gonna rotate it and kinda of get this thing lined up so I know I can hit the flush constraint here I know that this side and this side they need to be even right so they are and I hit apply. Now I know that this side and this flat edge right here, they're not supposed to be even. This should be in the middle, but this will give me a starting point, right? So now I'll use my offset. So I did one mate to get these two pieces to touch, and then I flushed the edges or the sides, and now I'm flushing the edge. And I'm going to use the offset. So let me try like a three in there. And that moved it the, the other way, which is good. Let me kind of square this up here. So Here's the look at tool. I didn't quite get halfway, did it? So let me try a four. And that seems to be pretty decent shape, really. So I'm going to leave it there and hit apply. Okay, so I've got that upright on there. Now I'm going to kind of repeat the process, but check this out. I'll hit mate now. So I'll click mate and I'm going to take the bottom of that upright and just put it on here like so and apply it. Now I'll use flush, right? So there's flush, and I'll say this side and this side should be even. Now check this out. Rather than make this and this flush and then use an offset, why don't I just say flush that to that? Right now they're dead even where they're supposed to be. Right, those are going to line up just like they're supposed to. This is awesome. Okay, so let me just square it up for you. There you go. All right, so now let's go ahead and say, all right, let's put the axle in here. So I'm going to go back up to place, and here's the axle. And I'll right-click and say OK. Now this one, when I when I finished building it, I had a, a work plane in it. So I'm going to expand axle, and I'm, there's that work plane. So I'll right-click on it and say visibility. OK, so now I'll go to constrain here. And here is insert. Let's take a look at that one. That's what insert looks like. Okay. So let's, let's zoom out now. I'm going to click insert in. And I'll say this end and I don't know, maybe right here on that. It goes in. Now I've got an option here. I could choose a different solution, which I'm going to. I'm going to try to pick this one. Okay. I'll try to click that first. And that, that did resolve it, right? But what if it didn't? I could use my offsets, right? So let me see. Let's try a two. <gasps> I went the wrong way. So let's try like a negative two. All right, now I'm going in the right direction. I'll try a negative five. And I only know that because I designed the whole thing, right? So I'll click apply. Now I've got that taken care of. So let's see. I think next I'll try to put the lever in here. So there's a lever. I'm just going to right click and hit OK. So this again, I, pr I think I'll use uh, insert constraint again. So there's insert, and let me see here, here, and I don't know, here. Okay, now I'm going to have to use an offset, aren't I? So let's try two. Wrong way. How about a negative two? That's not bad. Let's try a three. Well, let's rotate this around and just kind of square it up. So we're not far off, right? Let's try 3.5. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Let's hit apply there. Okay, so now I rotate this around, and let's go ahead and see if it moves. I should be able to pull this lever, 
and it should move but the thing is is I never grounded anything so I'm gonna go up here to base I'll right click on it and say grounded and so now that'll work like it's supposed to right all right so let's see I need to put a cup on there next so I'll hit place and here's the cup there's another a couple of work planes on this one, so I'll expand cup, right? And here's one work plane. I'll right click and get rid of the visibility. Here's another one. Same kind of thing. Now, on this one, it's actually simpler to use a joint. So I'm going to say joint, and I'm just going to say, you know, give me the kind of the midpoint of the circle and the midpoint of this arc, right? And you notice how by default it tried to. Tried to be intuitive for us and say rotational, but I need it just to be rigid. So there we go, and apply it. So now you see I have used join, I have used constraints, haven't I? All right, so let's see here. I probably need to put a stopper in. So let's see place. And let's see a crossbar. So I'll just put that in like so. Now this one... Let's see, how can we put that in there? I think what I'll do is I'll go to Constrain. And I've got Mate. That's the default. And I'll say, you know what? Give me that and let's put it on layer there. And I can apply that. What do you think? I think it looks pretty decent. Now I could, let's go use Flush. We'll say this side and this side should be even. And apply it. And then let me rotate this some. And maybe I use flush again and say this, and this should be flush. And that looks really good. All right, that's where it's supposed to go. All right, so now let's go to place because I've got some braces I put in there. So I'm going to hit place, and here's a brace. So I'll right-click and hit OK. Now that one came with a work plane, so that's OK though, right? So we can go ahead and expand the brace and right-click on plane and say get rid of that visibility. Now I can strain, and I'm going to say, you know what, let's put this, I'm going to mate it onto here, and click apply. But you're like, that's not how it goes. I understand. But this can still move right now, see? So I'll hit constrain, and let's say I need to mate this to here, and apply it. And now I can use the flush, right, and say, all right, you should be even to you, and apply. So we'll go ahead and finish that up, right? So I'll hit place again and bring in another brace. Now remember, I'm going to have to go ahead and just and get rid of the work planes. I don't have to get rid of the work planes, but it does help organize things a little bit. So I'll constrain and lastly meet these two together. And again, I think the hardest part of putting an assembly together is just all the rotating that has to be done so you can get a good view of it, right? So I'll meet this now to here and apply it. And then I use a flush constraint. So you see, we got that pretty well taken care of. Now let's do let's do one more. I'll place and get another brace in here. So there we go. That's kind of the gist of it, really.